Hey guys, welcome to Ready Up, your source for everything competitive in Guild Wars 2. I'm your host, Joshua grouch Rue davis Today we're going to be covering some uh, recent competitive events that happened in uh, both PvP and PvE. And uh, later we'll be talking about uh, Tournament of Legends 2 that's coming up this weekend. And also Gamescom, the uh, all-star invitational tournament at Gamescom. Uh, joining me today is Jebro, one of our authorized shoutcasters. Great to have him on. Jebro, are you with me? Hey, sir. How are you going? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm really good, thank you. Excited, excited stuff. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about today, um, sort of a new trend that we've seen. This is a, I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't say it a new trend, but we saw something really interesting about two weeks ago. Um, a group called DNT, Death and Taxes, ran a competitive PVE tournament, which was uh, something we hadn't seen before. Did you have a chance to catch the tournament at all? Yeah, I caught a bit of it. I caught about an hour or so. It was all, it was on quite. A long period of the day. As yeah, well, it was wasn't like it? it was like an eight-hour event. It was kind of yeah. long. It's like a work shift but with no lunch. <laughs> I watched was, the whole thing. <laughs> I definitely felt that. Yeah, but it was it was interesting because they were it was like shark shout casting PVE, but mm -hmm. they had to, I think they had did they have two um, people's feeds by, to, by, side by side or something as well. Uh, I mean, it they was... had an interesting solution for it, right? Because there's no spectator mode in uh, mm. in dungeons, and so they had the participants live stream the tournament and then they restreamed those live streams in uh, in DNT's live stream right and they had them side by side and then they would have yeah. them speed run the event and then the the group that you know finished it first would win and they had some really crazy rules like if you died during the event or if you died during your dungeon run you uh, couldn't respawn at yeah. all unless you were like the person that was actually streaming and so there was like I think people were doing like hashtag wipe hype during the event. Like people would like <laughs> die just completely, and then everyone would be like, the chat would go crazy. Like, oh my god, everyone's dead, and yeah, <laughs> or like people are gonna wipe soon. It's crazy. And it was kind of funny, but uh, anyway, shout out to DNT. Like it went really well. They had a pretty good amount of viewers for it, and uh, the dungeon community was really excited for the tournament. So, um, I mean, on that note, we're gonna have an, a, another tournament that's sort of like that is coming up soon. It's uh, run by a group called King, and they're actually gonna be mm -hmm. doing a fractal version of it. Um, so I'm not too keen on the specific rules for it, because, you know, fractals are very random by nature, right? Mm. Um, but it should be kind of interesting. If you guys go onto the dungeon sub forums, you can take a peek at it. Um, interested to see how it turns out, though. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, so I don't even know how that would work. Off the yeah, top of my head, this, but they must select, like, a, a level, like, say, I don't know, 30 or something I think like it's, that. Uh, I think they're 50 is the level you have to be they're at. Actually, they're actually going to put it at 50. Yeah. Wow. So that's going to be crazy. Is And if they can't... If they do the same kind of thing where they can't respawn or anything like that, it's going to be even more insane. That I would be. I don't difficult. think they had that rule. I think the, the okay. their idea is that you just do as many fractals as you can during that time period, ah, and then okay, uh, right. you get uh, you get points for every every fractal that you complete during the time. So I think it's like ninety minutes. You get to front as many fractals as you like. So it was kind of an interesting thing. It's nice seeing that new trend. Um, I know DNT was really excited about their turnout on their tournament that they had. Yeah. So hopefully we see some more events like that coming out soon. Um, again, it's a great outlet for you know some of our players who are not really into PVE and or PVP and World of World. You know, can actually get off let off some of that competitive uh, competitive urges, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And they get to be live on stream in front of quite a f quite a few people. Like I said, the other stream got a lot of viewers. Yeah, they did. It was a lot of people. Yeah, it was really impressive. It was good. Um, so moving on to PvP, and that's why you're here, Mr. Jebro. Um, yeah. We had uh, <laughs> the ESL Weekly Cup yesterday, and uh, it was a full cup, right? Lots of teams joined in, and uh, there were some interesting games, right? You want to tell us about that? There really was. I mean, we streamed. Um, so I've got the. I was just as I look in the way a little bit because I'm looking at the brackets from yesterday. We had some really good teams in there yesterday. Actually, a 55 HP monks kind of came back um, to the cup. They. They were against cheese mode a lot in the in previous cups as well, and they actually dropped out. On TCG came in, other teams came in as well, but they've actually come back and they actually, you know, they won the cup. You know, it mm -hmm. was such a solid performance and really some awesome, uh, some awesome play from a lot of those guys as well. But we did see some really good new teams as well, new teams like Team Exaltation who have been, have played in the cup before, but actually, you know, they've they got to the final before, they've got to the next round, um, and High Impact was uh, was a really impressive team as well that played yesterday. Also, um, 
pizza with Nutella. The mm. pizza um, with Nutella game uh, versus High Impact was just epic. And if you can check it out on Twitch, I'm sure some, there'll be a link somewhere. But it was a nail biting game. Even me and Blue were, you know, confused by the mm. end what had actually happened. It was 499 to 502, and Red were behind by 30 points, picked up a, um, a Svane kill. And also killed the uh, Guardian Bunkers. I'm not going to say his name <laughs> on the other team. But um, yeah, it was nail biting stuff. And, you know, it was a high, high impact 55 HP Monks final. Um, but the consistency and the uh, level of competitiveness of these teams, ESO used to be dominated by two teams. But now we've got five, six teams where, you know, the skill cap is, is, is increasing. And it's right. really good to see. Really good. Well, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of new teams in there too, right? Like, um, some mm. of the te- I looked over the bracket beforehand this morning, and uh, there's some teams in there that, that I wasn't familiar with, and I really think it's a great training ground uh, for these okay. teams to try to, to try to improve and get better and, you know, participate in, in TOL too. Um, I mean, I don't know if people have made the connection, but, like, um, most of the people that we picked for the All-Stars came straight out of uh, TOL 2. So, like, um, all the players that were in TOL 2, or, pardon me, TOL 1, I take that back. Yep. All the players that were nominated, we went to those first teams, like Apex, and we went to TCG and said, like, hey, you know, you guys did really awesome in TOL 1, we want to invite you to the All-Stars, and we brought them in. And, uh, like, that's the key. Like, you should be participating in these tournaments. If you want to get, you know, more active in the scene, like, jumping in these ESL mm-hmm. Weekly Cups, practicing, you know, kind of a, like a little segue into events like Terminal Legends. So it's great to see these new teams exactly. uh, jumping in there. So I've got to ask you real quick, uh, pizza with Nutella, is that a European thing? Is that even a thing? See, I had pictures, people sending pictures in the stream because I, I hadn't heard about it before. Right. But Syrah it is actually a- sent me a picture of it in, um, I think it was in, in America, I don't know, but it looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it it's, like, so it's actually a thing. It is a thing. It is a thing. Someone posted a picture of chocolate with Nutella and bacon. I mean, cho- chocolate and bacon is kind of a thing. Like, is it? it yeah, America. I mean, it's probably an American thing. Like, we wear our cowboy hats with our American flag <laughs> T-shirts, and we eat chocolate-covered bacon all day long. That's it's a national pastime. That was my Fourth of July in a nutshell. <laughs> Anyways, <Chocolate-covered> bacon. <laughs> I just have never heard that, that before. I'm gonna try it. Gonna. I just never heard that before. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so uh, <laughs> so Jeff, stop thinking about it. <laughs> so uh, who who took uh, the tournament? Just to recap, it's fifty five HP monks, and then uh, team exaltation coming in second. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, team exaltation went went up against fifty five um, in the semi. And the other semi was the pizza versus is uh, high impact. So, you know, they, those semi-final games were really good. And we had legendary no-names in there as well. Really good. Don't be a maybe. I mean, they that is a horrible first game. Team X, well, it's a really good game, actually, but we couldn't stream it. There was too many good games right. for us to cast, and it, which is actually quite a good thing, really. I mean, it's a good thing. It's a good problem to have, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean, if, we're, if, like, if we talk about Terminal Legends... Um, We've had, we have too many teams, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so in, in uh, Terminal Legends 1, just to kind of go back, uh, we had 128 teams maximum for both, um, you know, NA, EU combined, right? So we mm-hmm. had uh, 100, uh, 64 for NA and 64 for EU, and unfortunately, because of the popularity of the event, we had to turn a lot of teams back, right? Um, mm-hmm. So TL2, like when we went and started planning it, we said our main goal for this is that we need to make sure we get as many teams in as possible. Like, we want to make sure we're not turning anyone away. And so we doubled the capacity, and we thought, like, okay, there's no way that we're going to get this many teams signing up at all, right? Like, it's just not a possibility. And, and, and to support this, we had to split the term up into multiple qualifier weekends. We've got four qualifier days for every uh, for every region going on for four different weekends. And uh, it's just, right, it's just phenomenal. And we've actually had more responses, more people interested. After we removed all of the troll responses and the duplicate responses and the, uh, the the partial ones, we've got more teams signing up for TOL 2 than we did for TOL 1. Unfortunately, like, it's a good problem to have, right? Like, it's a good problem. Um, mm-hmm. But it's just phenomenal, like, to see how many teams are signing up. I mean, the llama hype is real. Yeah, I was going to say, it's all about the llama, isn't it? It's just, like, the <laughs> finisher, the mini, and it's just, you just, ah. Oh. It's going to be, it's absolutely amazing. It's a really good thing. And Team Q pops are literally today, I mean, Solo Q's a little little bit quiet because, you know, all these teams are just smashing Team Q at the moment. Right. I'm playing people I've never, ever played before in mm-hmm. teams I've never even, never even heard or seen. And, it's, and they're really good. 
Mm -hmm. There's some really good teams. We just don't know. I mean, I've got some predictions for this first first bracket of um, EU on Saturday, but, you know, I don't know some of these teams. I could be completely wrong. Um, you know, we could get some upsets, which, you know, I'd like to see, actually. It'd be quite good. I mean, there's a lot of players. Um, so, you know, we've learned less than, like, players love rewards, right? Like, everyone knows mm -hmm. that. Like, I like being rewarded. Everyone else does, too. And uh, there's a lot of really high school players that play PvE in Overworld, like almost exclusively, that just don't come into PvP because, you know, maybe they're not super fans of the PvP game type, but now that there's a unique reward there that they want, like, everyone's jumping in. And just in the past, like, month or so, since we announced, uh, since we announced TWL2, I've seen so many teams, like, in the high end of Team Q, like, granted, I'm, like, ranked, I th I'm in the top 25 right now on NA, and I'm seeing tons of teams, like, that high ranked who I've never heard of, and giving us a run yeah. for their money. Like, it's really impressive to see, and it's really great to see these players that are, again, very high-skilled uh, in World of World, you know, lots of roamers and, uh, you know, Havoc groups, uh, ju jumping into PvP and doing really, really well. So, it's interesting to see. It's tough to scout as well, because like, guys like, you know, you see 55 HP monks playing every week. You know their rotation, because right. you see it. Yeah. And but you know like TCG now right they're a little bit more random in their play they're a bit more reactive but you know teams that don't play in these cups and you can't you can't scout them for anything no, so you're just true. running into the map it's great it's no, really it's true. good and uh, you know we brought Helseth on two weeks ago to try to talk about um, team strategy because like I said mm -hmm. like there's a lot of really high skill players that come from Wolverine in PVE but as we know it, it doesn't always come down to to player skill right like there's yeah, a lot more true. to it than that you have to like work, learn to work together as a team and so we'll talk about some of the uh, the all-star stuff here in a little bit, but like for the new teams coming in that want to do really well in TUL2, like this is a great time to bribe some of those all-star players and be like, hey man, <laughs> I really want to vote for you, but but before I do, I really need to know all of your secrets. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so true. Please it's tell so me true. how my team can win a llama. And there's a lot <laughs> of players out there right now um, on the forums that are like, I would say running mini campaigns, like, hey, my name is so-and-so, please come vote for me. Um, you know, send me a message in game if you have any questions. I would love to help out, stuff like that. So, uh, this is a great, great opportunity for players to uh, to actually do so. So, bribe them for their votes, I guess, or bri bribe them to give them your vote. <laughs> does that make sense? I don't know. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'll agree. If we agree, then it's fine. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, so anyways, we got four qualifier weekends for each region, right? And so we've got a lot of the teams spread out between the different regions. Um, this first weekend coming up, um, some of the most notable teams that I saw on there was 55 HP Monks, uh, Pizza with Nutella, High Impact, who did really again, uh, again, we talked about earlier, did really well in the ESL Cup this week. And then also I Love Lunch. And uh, yeah. fortunately for them, they're all split up uh, between the brackets, so they should all make it, you know, assuming that there's not any wild cards in there or teams that names I just didn't, uh, you know, recognize right off the bat. Like, this should be really interesting once we start streaming those matches in the best of eight round. Oh, round God, eight, yes. Rather. Oh, God, yes. And, you know, I mean, possible matchups could be Chaos Army as well versus Pizza with Nutella. Mm -hmm. That's a possible third round game. Um, it'll be clubbing, clubbing the clubbing seals who potentially were in ASL. I'm not sure they changed their name with versus uh, 55 HP monks. That's another possible game. Um, ex Yugoslavia versus High Impact, possibly another third round game. Ex Yugoslavia been a team, one of those teams I mentioned before that I've played and just been like, uh, where have you been? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Play in ESL because you're actually quite good. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I mean, th there's some really good possible matchups. I mean, I could probably predict. I could predict maybe two teams to go through, but I'm not. I'm you know. I'm not even comfortable with, like saying that. I mean, do you, <laughs> I mean, you can say it, Jeb, bro. It's not like you're, you're not going <laughs> to will them into the finals. Let's be honest. <laughs> like, do you I have think, a do you have a prediction for the finals? Um, I think that I mean the, the teams will go it'd be 55 HP monks with strong possibility, and then probably I would say either I love lunch or high impact. Mm -hmm. um, not 100 percent sure, but. In those two ends of the brackets, the way they're formed, I think it's going to be one of the you know two of those three teams. Well, the thing that's through. the thing that's so we're trying this new format out, right? Like, so the idea is that there's four qualifier weekends for each region, and then you go into the championship round, which is going to take place just after Gamescom. Um, mm. So it's going to be kind of a cliffhanger because in the qualifiers, like you play up all the way to the last round, but the last two teams in the tournament would generally play it off, right? Like they would play to see who the, mm -hmm. the ultimate winner is. You're not going to get that closure. Like, those Much two teams better. are not going to play. They're not going to play mm -hmm. that day. So you're going to have I Love Lunch and, you know, whoever else, 55 HP Monks or whatever team makes it in that final round, and you're going to want to see them play, but it's not going to happen, unfortunately. You're going to have to wait until August 
I have to wait until August when uh, we have the final eight teams from the qualifier rounds that's, that face off. I believe the uh, 22nd and 23rd, if I remember correctly. Maybe 23rd, 24th. <laughs> that weekend. <Yes. laughs> the weekend after the... Gamescom is when they face off. Yeah, that's it. Exactly, yes. And uh, yes. so it'll be really exciting to see, like, you know, those teams are going to start... We're going to start learning what teams are in, uh, you know, in the championship as we go, right? Like, we're going to have, you know, we're going to know the first two teams, right, after the first weekend. Mm -hmm. So the teams that are trying to compete in the, in the other qualifiers can start to try to examine that team. Like, player, players like Sizer and Hellseth are streaming constantly right now. Like, okay, great opportunity yeah. for them to go, like, okay, you know, this guy's doing this strategy. Like, what can we do to, to play against them? And we won't know the final team in the, in, the, uh, in the championships until, I believe, the very beginning of August. So there'll be That's a good, fun. like, two weeks of time for players to try to strategize and, uh, you know, try to learn how to counter comp and play against them. Yeah, it's going to be good. I mean, there, there is, like you said, I mean, because of the All-Stars and because of Tournament of Legends and stuff like this, there's so many streamers. People can learn so much at the moment. And actually, people like Sizer are really quite good at just giving tips and hints as well. Um, so it's actually really quite good. I think they all do it as well. I think I was watching Subcutie today who was doing some nice tips and hints and tips as well. Um, some guys that aren't, you know, that doing World v World that jump into PvP as well that do some really nice guides live. So if anyone is in the chat now and you want to learn something, even just after this, just go and have a look. Browse Guild Wars 2 streamers. You're going to find a ton of them doing loads of stuff. All right. So I didn't do a homework on NA. I didn't, I was focused so much on, I, I saw you, I was talking to you, I heard your accent, I was, we were talking about pizza and Nutella, and I was so focused, I was so focused on, uh, on the EU stuff that I just completely spaced NA. Um, so I know that the first weekend has some interesting teams, I think, I think Team Elusive is in the first weekend, but I know that the third weekend is when the teams are going to be stacked up. Um, you know, we gave the option to teams and said, we said like, what's the weekend that you want to play the most? Like, when is your team going to be available? And uh, just the way that the the dice fell is the the qual the third qualifier is going to be ridiculous. That's it. I mean, people are. That's the thing. I don't think many people wanted to play in that first weekend. So, and I know in uh, NA compared to EU, they there's the teams are quite uh, very together on EU, whereas the NA is uh, they change their names quite a lot. But mm -hmm. even the comp stays the same. So, it's tough to like. There might be team people in there. I think Jew Binder. I yeah, yeah, there's some teams that have been around for a while that don't uh, yeah. usually play in tournaments, but they're all signing up. I think Blacklisted plays uh, tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. There was there was some good teams mm -hmm. listed. There is there's definitely, I mean, there's... I'm going to watch, obviously I won't be casting NA, but I'm, gonna, I'm still going to be very interested to watch, and it's going to be good for, you know, the All-Stars as well, to just watch how NA plays, because even with two, to those our two regions, we just play so differently. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting when I switch over to NA it's just like what? <laughs> <laughs> just, just what? Change? question mark it's, it's, it's good though it is really nice to see that different kind of play that happens between two regions it's yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before on uh, this show and just in general like when I'm playing the game is like it's weird how EU like you have like a there's a strong sense of team on EU, right? Like, you have mm -hmm. TCG, who's stuck through together multiple iterations of the team, right? Um, yep. From when they are playing on Curse, when they were... Uh, see, they, they were Curse, Civilized Gentlemen, and now they're Team Mist, you know, under the Mistpedia mm -hmm. banner. And uh, teams like them and 55 HP Monks, you know, have gone through multiple iterations, but they're still together. And there's just yep. a lot of that on EU. On NA, it seems to... Uh, it's a little bit more volatile. I think tempers <laughs> are hot. Uh, tempers are hot <laughs> on, on NA. And uh, even in like the weekly cups, you see teams like uh, I think yes yesterday there was a vote for a Candace was a team, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it does seem to uh, it does seem to vary quite a bit more. That's good. That's but good. I mean, not to say that we don't have high sc highly skilled players on NA. Like obviously we've got a lot of amazing players, and the All Star game um, specifically should be really awesome for displaying that. So Go I guess it's a I guess it's a good time to uh, to kind of move into that. I know I've mentioned it a couple times here, you know, kind of vaguely danced around it. <laughs> But uh, we have announced the uh, the All Star vote. We did that yesterday. We've gotten a couple thousand votes in already. Pretty awesome. Um, not gonna reveal any of the information today. Sorry, guys. But uh, it's it's a uh, man. How do I say this without like spoiling? It's just uh, it's what I expected, but not what I expected. But uh, it's good to see. Like it's changing all the time. So guys, if you haven't voted, please head over to guildwars2.com. Uh, it should be the first or second blog post there. It says vote for your. Uh, 
All Stars Choice for Gamescom, something like that. Click on that, server links inside, and uh, I've got player profiles listed, so you can kind of read about the players from uh, NA and EU, and you can vote mm -hmm. for your top selection. Should be pretty fun. I'm excited to go to Gamescom, excited to work with the players here, and uh, you know, Jebro, you're actually going to be at Gamescom as well, right? I am. Can I say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Always I that was a hint to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to move into it. So, uh, We've actually going to have a couple of our EU chat casters, because, you know, they're from EU. So we'll have Jebro here who will be helping us cast at Gamescom. That'd be pretty exciting to see him in person. And then we'll also have uh, Kronik, who's, uh, who's he's actually, uh, he's German, but he speaks English better than I do, unfortunately, for me. And better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and so he'll be joining us on the live stream as well. So I'm really glad to have our EU casters there. And again, we'll have our, uh, some of the dev team there, um, myself, Chap, um, you know, some of the guys. So we're, it'll be really fun. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, it's going to be so good. And it's going to be good to cast in front of, I, I don't know, people walking around or whatever. And also, like, it's going to be live. And we're going to have, you know, everyone's... We're going to have this mini community there as well. So if anyone is watching, just come down to Gamescom and say hello. Because I think we're going to be there, like, pretty much the whole time. So yeah. it's really it's always really good to meet community people. And obviously you guys as well. It's going to be... It's going to be pretty good to have a couple of Yeah, it will you know. be interesting to see. Um, so like last year, um, I mean, even the players have admitted it. It's, it's a lot different to play on stage in front of people or around people when they're watching you um, mm -hmm. than it is to play at home in, uh, you know, in your living room. Like even before I came to ArenaNet, right, like I used to do some of the tournaments. Uh, like I did the ESL, some of the ESL Cups. I did uh, Curse Master of the Mists. Um, I think I did the MRPG Invitational Blue. And like, you know, I could be casting with a nice shirt on and have my boxers mm -hmm. on, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> that's, I'm doing that right now. Um, I'm worried sorry, that you're going to wear boxer shorts on. <laughs> uh, but it was, really, like, it was just really weird to, um, you know, to go from doing it in my living room and, you know, like having like a Skype conversation with someone, you know, talking about the game to jumping into a room with a couple hundred people and, uh, you know, never having that experience before. Like, you know, I've done some presentations, you know, in college, like, hey, guys, here's whatever. And, but jumping into a room full of 300 people and having, having a go at it, it's, uh, it's a big difference. So it's interesting to see how, you know, not only you will do, but also the players. Yeah. It should be pretty exciting. Thanks for that. <laughs> I mean, we're actually going to be, like, so last year for um, for the PAX Invitational, we were in a hotel, we had our own uh, big old, uh, like, a ballroom, right, with a big stage. I mean, this time we're going to be at the Twitch booth, which is exciting, but mm -hmm. we're going to be on the floor at Gamescom. So there's going to be thousands of people just, you know, moving around, walking around the booth, like, where we're going to be. So there's just going to be tons of foot traffic. It's going to be insane. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't mean to, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to scare you at all. Jeez, Everyone's going to be watching you and judging you at all times. It's all right. I'm, I'm used to it by now. Yeah, I've done this. <laughs> I've got up and went with my job. I got up on stage in front of like thousands of people and I've had to do sound checks and stuff like that. It's a little bit different, obviously, doing this because it's longer. Um, but it's going to, yeah, it's going to be really, it's just going to be exciting, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Meeting the people, casting live. And this is what we want to do. You know, we want to play. We want to have people playing like land style in front of a crowd and also online as well. It's just going to be epic. It's going to be so good. Absolutely. Really looking forward to it and, you know, whatever we can pull up in the future. Um, I've been working on these events for just over a month now and pretty excited to be to be, uh, to be run the Gamescom with these guys. So it should be awesome. Yeah, You're doing a good job, dude. Um, like, like I said before, though, like, um, we picked these individuals from, you know, the top end of the community. We had a lot of players we reached out to that, you know, I said, like, hey, congrats for winning TOL1. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that person can't go for whatever reason. Some people don't have, you know, the legal documentation required. Some people just don't want to go. Um, but I think the group of players that we do have available, and you can go, again, read their, their bios, are really a strong group of players. Mm -hmm. Really strong oh, group of players. It's just, it's an epic roster of players. And, and you know, I, I, I'm trying to think of who I can vote for at the moment. I have voted, but it was just, you know, I almost did, you know, I'm not going to say what I did, but, <laughs> you know, Ip, Dip, Dog the other one and it was just you know I didn't know who to pick because I always felt like I was leaving someone out or someone that I like or, or I right. talk to it's, it's really tough to vote at the mm -hmm. moment it's really tough even NA side like there's some classic players in there that have been playing for since you know launch pre-launch oh, yeah. and it's going to be so good it's just even to meet these guys is going to be cool you know I suppose, um, so I asked the players to send me a, like a biography about them right like hey you know tell me tell me what you'd like to say to the players to have them vote for you, right? And mm -hmm. some of the players, like, wrote me just, like, these insane biographies. Like, I got to know the players so intimately over the past couple of weeks as they sent me these profiles. And again, I, I had to cut them down a little bit because some of them were, yeah. again, small novels, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't think people were going to sign up to read a book. 
but it's really interesting to see like the backgrounds the players come from. Like it's really easy easy to think when you're playing against someone like, oh, this guy, you know, he's really good. Clearly, he just plays video games all day long. But you know, looking at the profiles, we've got people that are in uh, med school. We've got engineers. You know, we oh. do have some. We do have some bums. We do have some guys who uh, <laughs> you know do nothing but eat Cheetos and play video games. But um, just such a diverse group of individuals that are that are up for this. So it's just kind of cool to see you know the faces behind the video games. Um, you don't always get to see that. You know, we the, a big face of the video game of uh, Guild Wars rather right now is like you and Blue and uh, Hellseth and you know some of the guys who like to live stream and use the webcam. But I mean, there's just so many interesting players out there that have interesting backstories. It's just great to hear about. That's it. That's the that's the whole thing, and it's one of the main reasons I think that you, obviously you guys are going to this. You want to meet you want to meet your players as well. You want to meet the people that are putting their effort and their time into something which they want, they believe in as well. And I think Hellstuff was saying it about, saying it last night, and I can't say it enough, is how passionate we are mm -hmm. about making it. And you, as, of course, as well, as being one of the first people that were kind of that passionate with, with Blue, you know, we, without these people, we wouldn't be able to do this. So it's, I want to say thank you to PvP community for, for a start, for, you know, Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, even last year as an example, like, again, you see, like, their online persona, and it's it's a lot different. It's a stark difference between what they are in real life, and I won't call any names out, but there was some people last year that came to, um, to the PAX Invitational that I was, I was wondering how it was going to pan out, you know? Like, I, I, you know, I know the guys, and they can be kind of trolls in-game, but when yeah. they got here, like, everyone was just, just like a teddy bear. Like, everyone was awesome. It's a great, great experience, and I know those guys all talk very highly of the experience that they had with us, and, um... We look past. We look back on it fondly as well. So really, forward, really looking forward rather to uh, <laughs> what we can do at Gamescom. Good stuff. All right. So uh, yeah. Anyways, guys. So please tune in for the uh, the Terminal Legends two this weekend. Again, that's going to be EU on uh, Saturday. That's going to be Mr. Jebro here hosting alongside Blue. And on Sunday we have the NA version. That's going to be again Blue hosting with uh, Mr. Seraph. He's going to be back helping us out here again. And I believe Jebro, you're going to be hosting all the weekends with Blue. Kind of the insider knowledge for the EU. Saturdays, yeah, yeah, on this on the EU side, this is going to be me mainly, I think, yeah. So it's it's going to be good to. A blue's going to be tired, but <laughs> uh, he's got you know it's some of the stuff I warn him about is like blue. Your schedule is just uh, you've got all these events during the week. You've got tournament legends on the weekends. Like, do you sleep? Do you eat? But uh, apparently he's like the confident. German casters as well. German casters, CN. I mean, if they're streaming all those games, uh, it's going to be they're going to you know they're up for it. They they're going to get excited during those times. But the way it's scheduled now is a lot easier for people to just tune in and they can have a look at a couple of games and they can tune out and then they can be like, all right, next week we've got some more stuff to watch. Absolutely, it's like over you know, a month. You bring up a good point yeah. too, like. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're bringing you and Kronik to cast, and, you know, a lot of people may not be familiar with Kronik, because Kronik is our German caster, and so he only does the mm -hmm. German stream, but he's been there, like, every step of the way, shoutcasting every one of these events. Mm -hmm. If you open up, like, during Terminal Legends, if you open up the Twitch browser for Guild Wars 2, you're going to find uh, Wafflerath, who's a French caster, who's always casting these events. I mean, every single time, just as often as anyone else, you're going to see... Uh, Chris Peke and Ashana, our Chinese casters, always doing these events. And you're going to see uh, Kronik and Spuddy. Like, we've got a lot of really dedicated casters, and I don't think they get a lot of visibility just because, you know, most people, uh, at least that play Guild Wars that I know of, speak English, mm -hmm. and uh, those other languages are very, uh, you know, very specific. So not everyone's going to tune into the Chinese live stream for it, but we've got a great group of casters, so I'm really excited to work with you and, uh, and Kronik at Gamescom. <sighs> It's going to be good. It's going to be good. We, me and uh, Nick actually casted an ESL Cup as well a couple of weeks ago, which was quite interesting. I think it was his first English English cast as a warm up mm. to games. He did really well. He did really well. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, like we're looking, we're saying his English is, you know, much better than ours. Yeah. He's got the, the <laughs> voice of a, you know, it's deep. He's just like, it does. It's, it's madness. It sounds great. Um, it sounds, yeah. It sounds good. like you could do like a narration for like a movie, like, like a movie <laughs> about like penguins migrating or something. It's really good. <laughs> Out of anything you could pick, yeah. <laughs> yeah just anything. migrating is an important, an, an important subject. It is. It, it is. needs to be discussed. You'd make it very interesting. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Uh, so I think that's about all we've got today. Um, make sure you tune in next week. We're going to be start doing some uh, interesting segments on some balance updates. We're going to be breaking it up into smaller episodes. Um, we kind of learned from the last one that if we try to, you know, cram everything into one, it gets very difficult. It's hard to follow. Um, you know, we sometimes will be very lengthy on one profession and we'll skip another one over a little bit. Just, you know, not intentionally, but it's just the way things happen. So we're going to split up a bit more to make things a little bit more easily digestible. So you guys are only learning about specific professions in each episode. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty exciting. We'll also be talking about some Gamescom stuff because that's coming up very soon here. 
be doing a recap of uh, TOL 2 because the first qualifiers will have happened by then. And yeah, uh, make sure you guys follow the channel here. You can click the follow button down there at the bottom. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Stay up to date on the episodes. Um, we have a broadcast happening next Friday, and it's going to be Points of Interest. And that'll be following the next release that we have going out, I believe, next Tuesday. So if you guys are interested in the living world at all, make sure to tune in for that. And uh, yeah, again, my name was... Uh, actually, you know what? I think Jeb just went away. I can't hear him anymore. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, there we go. Me. There we go. Uh, make sure to follow uh, Jebro here as well. Again, he's going to be showcasing all of the EU Terminal of Legends. You can find him at twitch.tv slash jebrounity. And you can also find him on Twitter at at jebdan. That's it. That's, That's it. it. And, of course, you guys can follow me at Groucharoo on Twitter. Um, not very interesting, but I do occasionally tweet about whatever beer I happen to be drinking or whatever bar poster I happen to be looking at or whatever weird shenanigans I get into. Anyways, guys, that's our broadcast. Again, tune in next week for uh, Points of Interest, and we'll be back in two weeks for another episode of Ready Up with hopefully some new information for you guys. So uh, we'll see you next time.